Hello everyone, today we're going to have a shop tour, but it's not a tour of my shop. Instead, we're going to explore somebody else's shop. Hey everyone, my name is Wes, and you can find me on YouTube by searching West Hampshire Woodworking. So we figured we'd mix things up a bit, so I'm going to do a tour of Wes's shop on my channel. And I'm going to do a tour of Art's shop on my channel. Okay, before we get started, in fact, I'm going to do a quick spin around. Um, both Wes and I, we both live in Canada, he lives not that far from me, and so a lot of the tools you're going to see as we do this shop tour, yeah, a lot of them are Canadian brands, which, you know, you guys can't even get if you're in the U.S., but it's not really the brand that's important, it's what you do with the tool, so we'll, we'll talk about layout and what's unique about uh, this place, and hope you found it interesting, so let's get going. Okay, unlike my shop, Wes has got an outside shop building. I'll show you a panorama from outside while I'm talking right now. So Wes, how big is it? It is 24 by 36. So that's 24 wide? Yeah, 24 wide by 36 deep, and it has 12 foot ceilings. And uh, what's the construction? Pole barn, block, it's a, or what? It's a pole barn construction. So with pole barn, that's poles go straight into the ground yes. in, in concrete? Yes, so no, there, there's a, a concrete pad in the ground. It's 16 by 16 inches square, four inches thick. And then it has a six by six post sitting on top of that, which I've tarred the outside okay. for water wicking. And then I have three quarter gravel all the way around the posts as well in the hole for water drainage. So I, what I did was I framed up the walls the posts, and then I put my top header across with, on both sides of the beam, which are two, uh, two by twelves. And then I had the concrete guys come, and they did the floor for me. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a level floor, not yes, like it's garage level. floors usually. Slope. No, yeah, this is this is completely level. Awesome. And uh, the last foot by the door, it slopes out yep. so that for for water, so it doesn't seep in. He does have a garage door over here, so. You pull, the, you pull the truck in or the car if you want to do something. Yeah, yep. sometimes I pull my truck in or I pull the car in to clean them or in the, sometimes I pull them in to put the tires on the cars mm -hmm. for the winter time and stuff like that. Sure. So, um, again, this probably looks bigger than it really is because I've got the wide angle because that way well, you really get a good view. So, um, 24, 36, and I've got like a 10 to 20 lens on the camera right now, so it might be stretching things, especially when I get close like that. Here's the door where you come in, and of course, first thing he has is a fridge. Why do you have a fridge in here? I mean, like your kitchen it's, is 10 steps away. It's for beer, of course. For beer. <laughs> but uh, no, so what happened was when we bought this house, um, we wanted a stainless steel fridge. So we bought a stainless steel fridge, and this was the one that was sitting in there. So I was okay. like, well, it comes I could, a garage fridge. I could try to sell it, or I just put it in the shop. Okay. And what's that? This? is a really big air compressor that I built an insulated wall around to help muffle the noise. How many, like, wow. I could sit inside that thing, I, I think. think. It's a, a, I think it's a five horse. Five. And I think it's 60 gallon air <laughs> he, compressor. He showed me his fuse panel. His air compressor has a 30 amp breaker on it. <laughs> yeah, it, it draws a lot of juice. And it's, it's really loud. That's why there's a wall around it. So these are, yeah, so you got MDF doors here and then you got two by two or two? Yeah, I figured it all by two by two and then it has rock wall insulation in there, the, the safe and sound. And it, it really helps muffle the noise. Like before, without that wall there, you could not have a conversation with somebody when it's running. But okay. now when it's running, you can at least talk to somebody. So moving from the garage door, we've got the lumber storage. So tell me about this rack, because it looks really big. Yes, it is. So this is, um, I got the plans uh, of this lumber rack from the Wood Whisperer, and he built this in his shop. And um, yeah, I made it exactly to his specs pretty well. The only thing that he did differently was he had it hinge here, so you had to slide it out. And I did it opposite, because I didn't want to have to open up my door whenever right. I wanted to pull material out. So it's hinged to the wall, and then if I need something, I just grab the bottom here and I swing it out. Oh, sorry, I've got a whole bunch of stuff in the corner, but and then I can slide material out. That's pretty wide, like the 12 or 14 inches wide. Yeah, I think so. It's probably about 14 or 16 mm -hmm. inches wide. Yeah. And uh, these are the are those conduit or is it plumber's pipe? The black pipe for the, the uh, rack on top. Or? Black pipe are actually. Um, Balusters for uh, 
previews for decks. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Okay. It's holding. There's a lot of Why weight. Not? There's a lot of weight on this, and I had I bought a big bulk pack for a, a house I used to own. I did a so, deck, and I had some left. I see ash. I see cherry. Yeah, well, this is a mix or, of oak and ash. Oak and ash. There's cherry. There's some. I believe that's aromatic cedar up there, and it's oh, yeah. some poplar with it as well, okay. and then maple. So farther down the wall, we got the thickness sander and the dust collector, and I'm gonna pause that for a minute because we want to talk about that a little bit later. Farther down here, we got the workbench and hardware storage. So tell me about this workbench. It looks strangely familiar to me. Really? I'm, I'm old enough. That, well, I, that I actually had shop class in grade oh, seven. Okay. Every, that was before all the shop classes got turned. Let me bring the camera a bit closer. This is going to be a real rough and uh, loose sort of uh, edit on this uh, video. So yeah. this workbench, uh, about probably 20 years ago, my dad salvaged this from the local high school in our town that high was school. getting demolished. And uh, he went in there and he actually took this workbench from there. It needs some work, it needs to be reflattened and stuff because it's got a bit of a cup to it. And uh, that might be a future video down the road on my channel. But it's, uh, it's not bad, it's nice and sturdy, it's solid, and it's, it's a real bugger to move. <laughs> Is, yeah. is, is, is maple as far as I you believe, know? I believe it's maple. It's, I don't it's really got know. the look of maple. It does. Uh, it's got the steel legs on it. Uh, I'm guessing this was not a wood shop though because I don't see any vices other than a yeah. metal working bike. Was yeah. it, I'm guessing you added the vice? I added the vice to it and it, I'm not sure what's, what shop it came out of in the school but it could have uh, came out of the uh, like a yeah. metal shop or a mechanic shop or something. When I, when I was in grade 7 which was uh, so many years ago um, we had benches kind of like this. They were roughly four by four, but there was a there was a vice at every corner because you'd have you know four boys. This was the 70s. Boys went to shop class. Girls went to home ec. Uh, anyways, there would be four boys sitting on the on the bench, so we had a, a little wood vice on each one, and uh, a bunch of hardware storage here. And, yep. And where 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 did you get this? This belonged to my grandfather. Cause he used to um, sell drapery and stuff, and he used this for all the drapery hardware. It was all organized. And uh, then obviously my dad, he inherited it and then he used it for pretty much the same thing that I'm using it for. And it was located in the basement of my house. So when I built the shop, I unscrewed it from the wall and I screwed it here and uh, yep. I loaded it all up. Be see, beside that, we see some French cleat storage with sandpaper, some tools, and the all important, which you can never have enough of, clamps. And I don't have enough clamps. No. Canadian tire? Nope, that is uh, Busy B. Busy B. Both of those are Canadian stores, never mind. So along the back wall here is the miter stand. I see it's all MDF. Is this like a Jay Bates plan or something you came up with? Um, or? Yeah, I tend to build a lot of stuff on the fly. Yeah. And that's what I did. I built two uh, carcasses. Uh, it's actually out of... Um, you probably can't see it here. Oh. It's actually made of three quarter inch Baltic birch. Oh my goodness. I went and I bought, I think, 10 sheets of Baltic birch, five by five sheets. And then I uh, bought, I think, two sheets, I think it was two, two or three sheets of three quarter inch MDF, which I used for the top and all the drawer fronts. And then I did uh, a few coats of just a, a water based uh, polyurethane. Right? It's got a nice texture. Yeah, nice and smooth. And then I have a 12 inch compound sliding. Miter saw in there, which has dust collection, but it only works when it's hooked up, obviously. And so I see some tool storage here. Yeah, yeah this is where I store my, my routers. I have uh, just a little trim router I usually use for roundovers. And then I have this router, which I tend to like just to leave set up because it's already set perfectly for doing dovetails. Okay. On, uh, on half inch material. So once I had it set, I was like, I don't want to touch it because it took me like probably it's finicky, a, yeah. a day and a half to get that set. And then, yeah, just a variety of other ones. A little plunge base for the DeWalt router. And then a big porter cable that I bought in a state auction as well. Routers, you can't have just one. No, and I, and I don't have enough. Because <laughs> uh, I need one for that. I, I have. I don't know how many routers I have. Uh, yeah. So bottom is just random storage, I guess? Yep, it's random storage. Like this is just some basic tools yeah. that I use. 
We, we don't need to see the mess. Yeah, yeah, don't see the mess. It gets cluttered. I mean, these ones are kind of interesting because they have scrap wood. Oh, in yeah. There. And I, see, I was trying to make my glass gates. These are my calls. Yep. Yeah, scrap pieces of wall. And yeah. And a lot of this stuff is probably, probably meant for the burn pile, but I have a hard time putting it away. Just yep. little scraps of walnut. The, the fancy wood you like to keep. Yep, exactly. So I mentioned the pano router, and I recognized something else that I'm pretty sure is a Matthias Wandel plan. Is this is this a mortiser? Yeah, this is a horizontal mortiser that I built. Um, I have to admit, I didn't pay or download Matthias's plan. Oh, so I just went basically off of watching his channel. That's fascinating. And uh, I just made sure that I purchased the right drawer slides, and I figured I could figure that out from there. And uh, yeah, it just cranks up. Now I have to, I have to make something for this top here because it's not quite finished. I kind of built it as a prototype and I thought one day I would actually make it better. But this needs to index somehow and stay. Because I find as I am routering, the vibrations and sometimes it just kind of slowly oh. starts lowering the router. Oh, interesting. So I need, so sometimes what I do is I'll clamp this or I'll clamp that or just to make it work, but. It works pretty good actually, and I need to get a router, a dedicated router for this. So moving along, we have a welder, some ladders, and I was asking, what's this? That is a sandblaster. And what do you do with that? Uh, you can do a, a wide variety of things, like sandblasting rust off metal, or what, this actually belongs to my dad, and he's, he's retired now, but what he used to do was sandblast cedar signs. Oh yeah, so, I got some pictures of that above the door. Yeah, so what he did was he would, he had a plotter that would cut out a rubber mask and he would stick that to a piece of cedar and then he would sandblast it. So then it eats away everything that's not the, the mask. The mask, yes. Yeah, so that would leave you with like raised letters or images or whatever you would stick on there. And uh, he did that for yeah, You years. young guys with your fancy CNCs, sandblasting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you, you should have seen his plotter. It was pretty fancy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was, yeah. yeah I was and after the sandblaster, we got the two sanders, spindle yeah. sander and the rigid belt. Yeah. And you like that one? Yes, I really do. I, yeah. I see it on a, a lot of people's. Do you, do you switch much or do you just... No, no. Because I have the two already, I, I leave this as a belt sander and then I use that as just a spindle sander. So I don't really see a need to, to switch back and forth. Sure. Now, actually, while we're, while we're here, you have a lot of bare, bare walls still, and every, everything is mostly down low. I mean, yeah. do, do you have plans for cabinets, or is yeah. it just sort of... Yeah, some... well, I, I only built a shop about two years ago, so I'm, I'm actually not done, you know? <laughs> done. And I, I probably never will be. No. So no. I... I didn't really want to build anything yet because I did have plans to do a dust collection. You may have noticed that it's unfinished right now. Yeah, we're going to talk but, about the dust collection yeah. really soon. Um, and really, uh, I mentioned the sun, we were talking about the sandblasters and I'm turned around here. He's got some artwork over above the door. I have a close up of that where, you know, some of it, I guess those are your dad's old signs. Yeah, yeah. There's, and uh, there's like, I think I see I mean, four sandblast it, signs up there. It, it is nice to have decorative stuff. It is nice to have decorative stuff on the walls and uh, makes for an interesting place to work. So continuing to move forward, we've got a King Industrial, which again is one of these Canadian brands, but it's a, you know, it's an import table saw. And I'm not actually that interested in the table saw because a table saw is a table saw. That's right. But I'm noticing the dust collection. When you built the shop, did you think about putting in a trench for power or air or anything in the floor? Yeah, it, it had crossed my mind and I was going to run I was going to run electrical through the ground and have it come up for where the table saw would be, but I didn't actually know where I wanted stuff to be and I thought That's if tough. I if I had a receptacle that was dedicated to that table saw, that table saw always has to stay there. And I didn't know if that's what I wanted. So what I did was I added 220 on this side of the shop and the wall and on that side of the shop so that I could either have it either way. I mean, there might be a day where I might be like, you know what, I want that stuff there and I want this stuff over there. And I might just flip. I've seen shops where they put it in the floor, like, uh... Frank Howarth seems to have that. He's got a lot of his stuff in the yep. floor. I've seen other shops like that. Uh, the most interesting thing I've seen in terms of uniqueness is I remember seeing a guy once where they basically put like a, a one foot wide trench right down the middle of the shop and he laid steel plate over it. Yeah. And then he could 
adjust where his outlets yeah. were if he wanted to. But yeah, I also thought about also doing a wood floor, and then I could just. Yeah. But yeah, that thought didn't last long because I also wanted to be able to drive cars in here and stuff. And yeah, I didn't know. I've seen wood floor. I've seen a few guys, but then then you're doing a you're doing like a. A crawl space. Yeah, underneath that's right. It. I would have to do yeah. somewhat of a crawl space, and it would it would actually have costed more. Really interesting. I figured because I'd have to at least do a, probably four foot footings down. Yeah, and then I mean this, this is this, this is, is the a, cheapest. This is a floating slab. This is right? a floating slab. Right. So now the camera is at the table saw, and we have planer, a six inch joiner. Now this has got nice long beds on it. Yeah, it has and, extensions on it. Yeah. Um, his dad's scroll saw, yeah, bandsaw, his... drill press, shaper, and the shaper is what I want to talk about. All right, so I've never used a shaper. I've only ever had a router table, so I'm really curious. Um, you have routers. I haven't seen a router table. Do you have a router? Uh, I do, but... Oh yeah, he's got a router table since... in the wing of the table saw arm. Yeah, but since I bought this, I don't use my router table anymore because I use this as my router table. Like a, what is three quarter horse, one horse? It's work? a one horse power. So it's one horse. Is it a direct direct drive? Is that how that goes? Uh, no, it's belt belt. It's a belt. Okay. Um, I can show you but the inside how it works, but the head on it. Um, do you need in a like? I notice you have a router cabinet. Yes. Those are router bits. So yes. So these are all quarter inch shank up there. So they they fit like my trim router and stuff. But I have half inch shank bits that fit my shaper. Do you need an adapter or? Uh, yes, it's already okay. in there, but what it is, it's just one of these guys here. So this is actually a spindle for stacking um, shaper heads, but that bolts in there and then you can take this off and these are all spacers and then you can stack different shapes. You can actually make your own molding, but oh, yeah. it's, I don't know, I'm nervous using it. It feels very safe, well. safe, but uh, <laughs> Well, I, I see, you know, there's dust collection on the back. Is there dust collection in the cabinet too? No, there's no dust collection in the cabinet, but it does actually a pretty good job sucking from right here. Okay. It gets a lot of it. Well, it, once having a good seal, I think, makes for a big difference. And so anybody who saw Wes's shop tour from a year ago, you might recognize a bit of the stuff that we've gone over. But one thing that's new is he just bought himself a new dust collector and he's working on the piping. Let me see if I can get this to pan up on the ceiling and going across and down and that is a huge upgrade to his shop. It's not finished yet, but let's talk about that for a moment. So the dust collector, another, this is a Craftex, which is a busy bee Canadian thing, but you see similar stuff from Laguna and that's right. Grizzly, Grizzly in the US. It looks fairly similar. So I would uh, say this is probably more similar to the Grizzly than the Laguna, but yeah. Two horse, one horse? Wait. It's a two horse. So it has its own circuit, I guess? Yeah. Two horse. I think it's around 1500 CFMs. So this is this is six inch? Yeah, I got a six inch uh, main trunk. And then off of it, I have four inch drops to all the machines. I see these sort of, these releases here on, on this. What is, what is, what is that for? That, that is so that you can um, take up the steel drum for dumping. Okay, so, the, okay, so that's... And it has this cage that you just pull out and you can take the bag. So those push the lid down? They push down, it has like a foam gasket oh, okay, on there okay. that seals off. And then I guess once it's running, it would probably suck up. Yeah, it does. And that's what this, this is, that's what this cage is for. It's supposed to stop the plastic bag from yeah, sucking up. Yeah, that's, that's always the trick with, yeah. from what I've read about cyclones. So, as you know, we're in Canada and it is about minus four, so four degrees below zero, and yet it is perfectly warm in here and that's because of that. So tell me, what is that? Well, this is a, a radiant tube heater. It's a natural gas fed. Natural and, gas. Okay. It, um, yeah, it just it works really well. Is there a blower? Because I noticed it's going it, out it sideways has, and not it, up. Oh so wait, no, no. Sorry. It has there's, a. Yeah. There's two pipes. Oh yeah. yeah. So it has a blower that is pulling air in from outside. Okay, so the horizontal is where it pulls air in. And no, then sorry, goes, no, sorry. It, the the vertical pipe is pulling air from the attic, actually. Oh. Which is really close to a soffit vent. Oh, okay. And it pulls air in because uh, you need oxygen, and then it blows a flame through, and then the heat exhausts out the side. Okay. Yeah, and but it does a really nice job. Like it, I, I find that it warms up the objects rather than the air. So. So it was, yeah, it's on the radiant. 
yeah. air, as opposed to yeah. forced air. So yeah. no air conditioning. So when it's no. 30 degrees or you know 100 Fahrenheit in the summer, we're sweating out here. Yeah, I, yeah. How thick are it's, your walls? It's six inch thick. Walls six inch thick with, with rock wall insulation. I think it's an R. And Kadatic is an R50, and I think the walls are like an 50, R. 50 zero? Yeah. Yeah, R50. Oh wow, is that yeah. code? I I, have a... I don't know. I contracted the, the insulation out to be blown in, okay. and uh, they said they do it in R50, and I said okay. And is the slab insulated? Yes, the slab is insulated. And what I used was the um, the cutouts from steel doors. Seriously? From the, the cut-in windows. Yeah, it's the cheapest way to insulate your concrete floor. So how much? It's that... an inch and a half thick, wherever the thickness of a door is. So it actually has the aluminum from the doors on each side with the styrofoam in the middle. Right. And I picked up a whole stack full, like my work trailer was filled. And I just laid them all out over the floor, made sure they're all nice and even. Yeah. Free is great. Oh yeah. We're playing with the belt sander. I don't have one. I don't think it's that common for people because you know usually you're going to start with a table saw and then you might move on to like drill press and planer joiner. Um, I don't really have the room so I'm really curious about it and uh, Wes is going to put it through its paces. I brought a piece of rough cherry. It has not been planed or anything so and I want to see what happens when we feed it through there. So this is what it looks like after five, six passes, I think it was. I mean, of course, obviously, you would normally run this through a planer first. I was just curious to see what would happen with uh, running it through. In fact, I think there's a few burns there. But, uh, well, that was kind of neat. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna rush out and buy one. I'm kind of, what, what do you use it for? Um, I use it mainly for just leveling off boot joints after I've um, glued up like a tabletop or something for like a dresser. Cause this is only does 16 by 32. So it's not really big enough for like a kitchen table, but, it, no. it's, but it, it's nice for like dresser tops or end table tops and stuff. It's perfect for that. I haven't really gotten too much into make of making end grain cutting boards, but I can see this really being useful for that. No, it's going, it's going straight, so you still are going to go over this with like a red yes. orbit afterwards? Yeah, cause yeah, because you... this has got like a 60 grit in it right now, so normally what I do is I'll run it through, uh, and then when it comes out all flat, and then I take it to my workbench, and then I'll start off at like probably a 60 or, or go to 80 grit. So yeah, so overall, and then you sand see, it all the way up to... You, you still need to do a finishing yeah. pass yeah. of some kind after running it yeah. through here. So I know a lot of guys, what they do is after it blew up, they might take a belt sand or two or whatever, trying to flatten yeah. their oh, yeah. And this, this is, saves a lot of time with yeah. that. Cool. And that's it for this one. As always, I'd like to thank you for stopping by. If you haven't done so yet, I suggest you check out my shop tour, which is over on Wes's channel. Also, please remember to click the like button. And if you feel we've earned it, please consider subscribing to both our channels. And again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. See you later.